Hello, and welcome back to the fifth instalment of my Failed Franchises series. In this series, I look at failed rail franchises, whether this be their contract being stripped from them, their franchise simply being deemed poor by the public and industry, or, for the first time in Failed Franchises history, the operator going bankrupt. Today, we delve into one of the most friendly and affordable operators who sadly, due to the government's strict routing guidelines, were unable to turn a profit. This being Wrexham and Shropshire. What really led to the downfall of this brilliant company? And will we see its revival soon? Find that out and more in today's video. Firstly, what was the Wrexham and Shropshire or WNS franchise? Well, it wasn't a franchise at all. It was an open access operator a train company that runs on commercial risks and is not subsidised by the government, running on third-party infrastructure and buying paths on routes. In the UK, there are several of these currently in operation as of March 2024. Eurostar, Grand Central, Heathrow Express, Hull Trains and the newest, Lumo. Today though, we are going back to 2006 when the Wrexham, Shropshire and Marylebone Company Limited was founded with the aim to restore services between Wrexham and the capital for the first time in 40 or so years. The Open Access Operator, or OAO, would be a joint venture between John Lang and Renaissance Trains and would be the fifth Open Access Operator in the UK. After some funding speculation, Wrexham and Shropshire confirmed they would be able to operate services from Wrexham to Marylebone. There were some funding issues as to whether Wrexham Depot could be used or not. They weren't the first privatised company to try London services from Wrexham. Virgin Trains had trialled a Wrexham to Euston service in 1998, but this was found unprofitable and logistics issues meant it was withdrawn just a year later. However, Wrexham and Shropshire were keen to press on. A test service ran in 2007 using an EWS Class 67 and Mark III coaches and, in December 2006, Wrexham and Shropshire announced they would be running services using this stock. Originally, the company had envisioned Class 158s or Class 170s to run the service, but a lack of these DMUs and the availability of loco stock had tempted the move. In December 2007, Wrexham and Shropshire gained track access rights and rights to operate services from the Office of Rail Regulation. Wrexham and Shropshire originally planned to operate services from 2007, but the application for operation acceptance came too late in the year to allow this to happen. Hence, the first public service ran on April the 28th, 2008. Welsh Deputy First Minister, yes, Wrexham is in Wales, Ewan Wynne-Jones, suggested this moment would be a key role in building a more effective rail network for Wales. The service was the first time Wrexham had seen direct regular services, the Virgin ones weren't regular, to London in 41 years. Wrexham Shropshire would run up to five trains a day from Wrexham and London at a lengthy journey time of 4 hours and 15 minutes. The reason for this long journey time was the convoluted route Wrexham and Shropshire were forced to take. The route Wrexham and Shropshire ran was from Wrexham to Marylebone via Wabon, Chirk, Gabowan, Shrewsbury, Wellington, Telford, Cosford, Wolverhampton, and then to Tambridge Parkway, and then onto the Chiltern Main Line to Leamington Spa, Banbury, and then to Marylebone. Marylebone was chosen as John Lang at the time, later Deutsche Bahn Regio, ran the Chiltern Railways Company, and Wrexham and Shropshire could easily get agreement from Chiltern to run it into Marylebone, as it was basically the same company as Chiltern. Some of you who know the route well might ask why I failed to mention Birmingham New Street and then Birmingham International and Coventry as calling points, because the route would have to go through those stations to get onto the Chiltern Main Line. Well, unfortunately for Wrexham and Shropshire, Virgin had a moderation of competition clause in their franchise, which meant that Wrexham and Shropshire were unable to call at a number of stations along the West Coast Main Line, although they could serve Wolverhampton and Birmingham International on a pick-up slash set-down only. However, Wrexham and Shropshire chose not to call at the latter. This meant a large market for Wrexham and Shropshire, Birmingham to London, was unable to be utilised due to potential competition infringement with Virgin. However, this even applied for Chiltern, even though both were the same parent company. Wrexham and Shropshire were only able to call at Banbury, but not Leamington Spa, Bicester or any of the other stations along the Chiltern Main Line. The company did, however, serve Wembley Stadium on event days, and this proved to be popular with fans. Something else that proved popular was the Wrexham and Shropshire fleet. <laughs> 
The Class 67s weren't too noisy, and the Mark III's were splendidly comfortable going through intense refurbishments. The fleet of former Virgin West Coast Mark III's were put through an intensive refurbishment scheme under Rexman Shropshire, with the three car trains, these were later extended to four carriage, being worked with a driving van trailer at one end to negate the need for two locos. Vexman Shropshire were also heavily praised for their customer service. They ended most years with an above 90% customer satisfaction rating, and in 2009, Vexman Shropshire were even allowed to call it Leamington Spa for the first time. However, this is where most of the positives end, sadly. In December 2008, Virgin resumed their Wrexham to Euston service via Chester and Crewe, with one morning Euston arrival and an evening departure. At 2 hours 30, any commuters would find themselves picking Virgin, with the more modern Class 221s also being desirable to passengers. However, Wrexham and Shropshire hit back, and in 2010 they announced new flat fares of around £40, regardless of when you travelled with the company and where. Also in 2010, a lodge by Arriva Trains Wales to run from Aberystwyth to Marlborn, running on much of the same route as Wrexham and Shropshire, was rejected as DB Regio stated they would have to cease funding for Wrexham and Shropshire, thus putting the company in a perilous position. Sadly though, this would not be enough, and in December 2010, Wrexham and Shropshire announced they would be only running three services a day from Wrexham, with the fourth being removed a year earlier in 2009, citing low passenger usage and a wider economic downturn caused by their financial crash. Also in 2010, Deutsche Bahn announced hopes of merging its sister companies, Wrexham and Shropshire and Children Railways together. This would allow for the former Wrexham and Shropshire services to call at many of the Chiltern stations, such as Solly Hall, if going via Birmingham New Street, Leamington Spa, Banbury, Bicester, High Wycombe, etc., picking up commuter traffic to and from London without having to negate competition clauses and pick up set down rules only. Although Wrexham and Shropshire went as far as repainting a DVT into provisional Chiltern livery, the merger never happened due to the Department for Transport rejecting the application on a basis that the Chiltern franchise shouldn't really operate services as far as Wrexham. This ended any hope of saving the Wrexham and Shropshire company, and although the company never publicly stated its financial issues, they were somewhat obvious. By 2011, Wrexham and Shropshire knew time was up. On the 20th of January, Wrexham and Shropshire announced that they would be ceasing operations. After a review concluded, the company would never be profitable in its current state. Poor timing with the Great Recession led to low passenger numbers and competition clauses led to an unusual calling pattern and long journey times. The last train to run was the 6.30 from Marlborough to Wrexham General and ended just a two and a half year operations ban. Although they ended the previous quarter with 96% passenger satisfaction rate and the best staff and fares around, the £2.8 million yearly loss and £13 million invested by Deutsche Bahn Regio led to the collapse. Passenger Focus, the rail user watchdog, said that Wrexham and Shropshire would be missed by many passengers, stating, It's a shame that Wrexham and Shropshire, clearly a passenger favourite, will no longer be part of the choice available to passengers. 55 staff lost their jobs, but were able to find new jobs on the railway. Some of those staff, and all of Wrexham and Shropshire's fleet, went on to sister company, Children Railways, who still operate their Mark III's in their Wrexham and Shropshire interiors to this day, with newer Class 68 locos, hauling the sets from Marlborough to Birmingham and Starbridge Junction. So yes, the Mark III's did end up part of Children Railways, and yes, you can still ride part of the Wrexham and Shropshire route to this day, on the same fleet too. Sadly though, you don't get the brilliant staff or superb first class offerings. Well, now we've looked at the relatively brief history of Wrexham and Shropshire, but what about the future? Yes, Vexham and Shropshire might well be returning, but under a different company and running under a slightly altered route. Just before we look at this potential new operator, do consider liking, subscribing, checking out my full failed franchises series and joining or donating to the channel if you are enjoying this video. A huge thank you to my members, Callum Martin Bell, Jack's Railway Secrets, JMSF and Louis Donnellan. You can join them from as little as £2.99 a month and get early access to videos, shoutouts in all videos, access to private Discord channels, and more. Also, thanks to my donators, Clive's Travel and Trains, Deva Rooney, G Patterson, and Swansea Valley Bus Spotter, who without these videos would be impossible to make. Also, do consider joining my Discord server for free. Link in the description, as with all my donation links and social media links. On Discord, you can chat with me and many other rail enthusiasts. So, it's definitely worth considering. Thank you everyone, and let's look at this proposed new operator. 
The Wrexham, Shropshire and Midland Railway, I'll be calling it WSMR, is a currently proposed open access operator, running from Wrexham General to London Euston, with the exact same calling points until Wolverhampton, where it then traverses round Birmingham to Warsaw, calling at Coleshill and Nuneaton, before joining the West Coast Main Line and calling at Milton Keynes Central and then finally Euston, instead of Marylebone. Based in Birmingham, the new WSMR are yet to submit an application, at the time of recording, to the Office of Rail and Road, and have very limited information on their website, but still seem keen on the route. However, could it be a more successful venture than Wrexham and Shropshire? Well, perhaps. The route, whilst it still avoids Birmingham, does call at more major stations, such as Warsaw and Coleshill, who haven't had direct London services for several years, as well as Nuneaton and Milton Keynes Central. Personally, I would imagine that the Wolverhampton, Nuneaton and Milton Keynes stops would be pick-up or drop-off regulation only, due to them potentially infringing with Avanti West Coast and London North Western Railways operations, and perhaps even out-competing them. This could be detrimental to the company if the Office of Rail and Road deems these stops must be regulated, and if the ORR allows WSMR to run in the first place. The West Coast Main Line, especially near Euston, is already very congested. However, what's the point in an open access operator if they can't compete with other operators? In my mind, open access operators are there to compete with other operators, like Hull Trains, Grand Central, and especially Lumo do with London North Eastern Railway, and with themselves, competing with fares and journey times. Why can't WSMR do this with Avanti, especially as fares have recently risen 4.9% at the time of recording? However, journey times will still be slow, probably around 3.5, up to 4 hours, which is still less than Wrexham and Shropshire due to increased speeds on the West Coast Main Line, depending on stock of course. Frequency could be an issue too. Avanti have recently announced their intent to increase service from nearby Chester to Euston up to hourly once new stock comes into service. Seeing as Wrexham and Chester are very near each other and the services between the two by Transport for Wales currently gets into Chester 10 minutes before the Avanti service to Euston leaves, this would mean that a journey time would be most likely faster on Avanti via Chester. So, apart from the price, would there be any more incentives to go via WSMR rather than Avanti or TFW to London? Personally, I can't imagine there would be huge demand from Warsaw, Coleshill, Nuneaton, etc. to go to places such as Shrewsbury or Wrexham. However, a direct link for Warsaw and Coleshill to Euston could provide commuter services for WSMR, depending on their service times. Also, a direct fast link avoiding Birmingham between Wolverhampton and Warsaw could prove popular. Finally, the stock. There currently aren't too many diesel stocks available, which would be needed to run up to Wrexham and along Coleshill. There were the infamous Class 175s, but they would need high maintenance due to past issues and would need to be coupled to form four, five or six car trains, which could prove difficult operationally. The Mark 5As are also too unreliable and would be very costly to run, especially when paired with Class 68s that are noisy and not the most reliable units. Reliability would be key for running on the very busy West Coast Main Line. The Chiltern Railway's Mark 3s may become free soon, with then due to be replaced by the end of 2025. Could Mark 3s once again be part of a Wrexham and Shropshire company? Or do WSMR get the funding they need for new IETs or other bi-mode units to run under electricity along the West Coast Main Line and between Warsaw and Wolverhampton, and then diesel or battery elsewhere? Perhaps the Class 221 Voyagers could be used. Currently, several will be off lease once Avanti gain their IET replacements, although Cross Country could really do with these. Perhaps, looking even further into the future, WSMR could use East Midlands Railway's Class 222s once they get replaced by new Aurora units, or even TFW Class 158s when the Class 197s finally get rolled out in late 2025 and early 2026. Whatever happens, it will be very difficult to get another Wrexham open access operator up and running, let alone it being profitable. Currently, there isn't much information at all. Their website has weirdly zero information, no time span, no nothing. And I've emailed them, but to no response. Any updates I receive from the company will be in the pinned comment below. Rail Gazette suggests the company will plan to run up to five trains per day in each direction and will lodge an application to the Office of Rail and Road for operations in early 2024. Seeing as I'm currently recording this in early 2024 and there's been no update, I assume they're still planning to lodge this application in late 2024 perhaps. Whatever happens though, 
Wrexham and Shropshire will still be remembered for its impeccable service quality, but being at the wrong place at the wrong time, as well as the company being severely hindered by calling patterns and rejections for mergers which could have saved the fledgling TOC. Mostly, this has been done by the government. Hopefully, WSMR can run new services and could be more successful than Wrexham and Shropshire, which is definitely a failed franchise. Or failed operator, although it doesn't really have the same ring to it, does it? Well, thank you for watching this shorter failed franchises video. Do let me know what operator I should do next, and make sure you like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. Thanks so much for watching, goodbye. <laughs>